Hey guys, what's going on? It's Blade again from Car Audio Security. Today we're looking at another brand new Sony head unit, the XAV AX6050. Okay, so the AX6050, what is this unit? So this is another brand new revised head unit from Sony with wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, HDMI, a capacitive touchscreen, and this unit is able to play LDAC files wirelessly through Bluetooth. So if you're just Bluetooth streaming to this device without using Android Auto, uh, you can stream using LDAC, which is essentially high quality music. So as always, we're gonna open up the box, show you the contents, show you the unit itself and get that powered on and show you how it looks when it's powered on and go through all the features. So let's get opening. Okay, so we have the contents of the box laid out in front of me here. To go quickly through the, the contents of the box, first of all, you have your USB cable. So this comes with a USB-C cable rather than standard USB. Uh, this is to allow fast charging. So if you have an Android phone, you'll know USB is obviously direct connection. Uh, if you do have an iPhone, if it's a previous generation to the brand new one, you can use the adapter because you won't have USB-C. If you have a brand new one, it will be USB-C. Next, you have your Bluetooth microphone. Standard issue, Sony Bluetooth mic. It's gonna be plugged into the back of the unit and then run around to your headliner. They do also give you a flat plate mount. So if you do wanna stick it onto a flat surface, for instance, you can do that also. Next, you have uh, a bag of accessories. So you have some screws that are the right thread to go into the side of the stereo and the removal keys for the cage that comes with the stereo also. Next, you have your GPS antenna. Uh, this is a must fit item as this is being wireless CarPlay. The GPS is needed to allow that to work. So you have the GPS itself and you also get a magnetic plate for that to stick onto. So if you are sticking it to something metal like the top of the unit, that has to be included. Next, you have your pre-out plug. So uh, we'll get to that kind of more in depth in a second, but this gives you all the inputs and outputs for accessories such as your front, rear and sub uh, pre-outs. Uh, these are five volt also, and as well as a camera input. And then you have the unit itself. Now, before we power the unit on, we're gonna be looking at the physical features of the unit. Now, as stated, this is a 6.95 inch capacitive touchscreen. Now, if you remember, we just reviewed the AX4050, uh, which has the resistive touchscreen. So slightly cheaper model, slightly lesser uh, screen quality. So if you wanna watch that video, just click in the link above me. Uh, but yeah, as I said, the capacitive screen, that basically means that it's a bit more touch responsive. Uh, screen quality is a little bit better. It's gonna be more like the touch responsiveness you have on your phone, for instance. This has a centered button panel. So rather than you having a actual like a whole row of buttons all the way along. They've centered it, which there's no real benefit to that. It just looks a bit nicer, I personally think. And on the 6050, you have a bezel-less screen. So rather than having a plastic bezel that sits around the edge, it's glass all the way across, which means when fitting it with a flush fascia, it looks really, really nice. Now moving to the side, as most Sony double dins are, it is a single din chassis. So rather than being doubled in, it's singled in. Now what they've done also is made it even shallower. I believe it's about 15 mil thinner than the previous models. That just makes life installing it a lot easier. Now, connections on the back of the unit, we'll quickly run through these. So first of all, you have your FM input, your DAB input, mic input, steering wheel control input, GPS input, RCA input, HDMI input, USB, and your power input. And talking of HDMI, this unit has HDMI input, which basically means any capable HDMI device, streaming device, will stream through to this screen. Just to show you the expandability of your HDMI input in this unit, is we're gonna connect a PlayStation. So we're gonna pop this in a car, connect up the PlayStation, and we're gonna have some fun. So let's go. OK, 
Okay, so we've got the PlayStation hooked up in the footwell here. We've just kind of like jerry-rigged it together for the time being. Now, obviously this is kind of the extreme example of what the HDMI could be used for. Most of the time you can use it to do screen mirroring for an iPhone through HDMI, or basically anything that uses HDMI. Uh, but obviously you can do uh, a PlayStation or an Xbox. To show you how it works, all you'll do is you'll go from your home screen, you go into all apps, HDMI, and it should be working. So we've got it all set up and I'm kind of halfway through playing a game right now, so let's carry on. So as with the previous video, this has the quick start, which we demonstrated. Um, it automatically connects, as you can see, it's gonna to connect to my phone. Um, obviously, like all other head units, if it's a multimedia unit, it will uh, show you that basically that warning message at the, at the front. And there we go, so straight away connected to Android Auto. I have previously paired my phone to this already, uh, but I'll show you how to do that. Obviously, so you've got the radio over this side. Now with this, you can obviously set your presets, which are here, and then you can manually tune. And it will see you can manually tune, or it will do. So you can either do a auto tune, which will seek and find the nearest channel, or you can switch that and do a manual tune and then basically set it as a preset. So if you press and hold, it will preset that. Uh, let's come up here. If we go into DAB, it's the same concept basically, but you'll find your channel, preset it into your presets there. You have a total of 18 presets on this, so quite a lot. Bluetooth, pretty self-explanatory, pair your phone and then that's where you'll find your Bluetooth audio. Most of the time, most people will be using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, so you'll very rarely need to use this. Phone is the same concept, obviously, but with your phone book. So if you've downloaded your phone book onto here, that'll show you all your contacts. Again, if you're using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, that will do that for you. Now settings, you can go into device connection. That will show you all your paired devices and you can select between the, the devices on there. The sound settings, did go through this quickly uh, before, but you have your EQ, so you can have two custom EQs or there is a selection of presets that you can choose. You can adjust the subwoofer level, level and basically turn it on and off. You have your balance and fader, standard settings there. Now listening position, as I said last time, this is basically your time alignment. So if you're looking to get the absolute best out of the system, then your time alignment needs to be set up. If you like it to be kind of center stage in front of the driver, you can do front right, or you can set your own custom one and then do your measurements from there. But you really don't need to play around with that too much. And then you have your crossover settings. So that allows you to set a high pass or low pass filter for your speakers and your sub. Now going back, you can go into Customize. So Custom button, this is your center button here. You can change that between Mute or Source Change. So if we go to Source Change, let's go Home. Let's say we're in Bluetooth. You can then tap that, and that'll go back to Radio. Tap it again, Dab, or we can go through whatever we need to. But let's say we're listening to the radio. Um, and then we want to go and mute it. We can change that back to be mute. So we'll go back into radio. As you can see, it's a very quick and responsive unit. You can tap that and that'll mute it. Tap it again, it will unmute it. Then you can also select a different wallpaper. So if you wanted one of the preset wallpapers, you can also do that. And you can select up to two USB file images for your wallpaper. So if you connect a USB to the USB in the back of the unit, that will allow you to download any images that are on there. And then you can set that as your background. I'm gonna set it as red. Now application is your camera display. So this is basically your reverse camera settings. If you do have one, uh, you can change all that through here. And then your radio, radio tuning steps, you can change it between 100 kilohertz and 50 kilohertz. Again, that's something you probably wouldn't need to mess around with too much. 
And then system, this is just basically your main system settings. So you turn demo mode on and off, change your date and time, language, your steering wheel control settings. Uh, you can turn the beep on and off if you don't like the beep. So change that. I'm probably going to turn that off to be honest. It can be a little bit annoying. So volume settings, you can set up an actual volume for different sources. So phone call volume, you can set to be a bit louder if you need it to. Uh, this is something a little bit different. So this is optional audio output channel. So basically you can set, so if you get like your guidance through your navigation, for instance, you can either, ch you can choose that to come through your front speakers or your rear speakers, completely up to you. Dimmer, you can set as you need to. Uh, key illumination, you can turn that on or off. Uh, key brightness on display, you can change, obviously, again, that, that, the brightness on there. Uh, so driver position, obviously, if it's a right-hand or left-hand drive vehicle, that will mostly affect your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Mic adjust, you can set it to be a small cabin, medium cabin, or large cabin vehicle. Uh, Bluetooth, basically, on or off. SPK is basically a, a password for the system. You don't really need to, to set that. And then you have your system information, software, factory reset, and open source licenses, basically just bits and bobs in the background there. And then you can go into all apps. Also, you have the option for USB, HDMI, rear cam, and then devices. That's just your devices, basically. Okay guys, so that was the overview of the brand new Sony AX6050. I think it's an absolutely fantastic unit, really, really good price point at the moment on our website as of today's filming, £549. So bang on price for a wireless CarPlay unit. It's got plenty of features, very, very competitive, and it's very, very simple to use as well. So if someone's not looking for too many options, you've not got too many options on this and it's very, very easy to navigate. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we've added a little bit extra in with the PlayStation and so I hope you've enjoyed that as well. So make sure you like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.